It is with great pleasure that I welcome Sven Schreiber to our Maritime Innovation Interview Series. As Business Unit President for Water, Wind and Fuel Solutions in Alpha Laval's Marine Division, you are at the helm of transformative advancements from the pioneering ammonia waste incineration boiler to the NRG Marine Acquisition. Today you will unpack its impact on ammonia as a marine fuel, the value of integrated tech emit alternative fuels and strategies for blending steady gains with game-changing tech. Welcome, Sven, to our interview. Well, thank you, Joachim, for having me. Uh, really great to be here and to share the thoughts around this. You have secured the world's first order for a marine boiler system designed for ammonia waste incineration. What does this breakthrough mean for ammonia as a marine fuel? Well, of course, uh, ammonia is a very, very important uh, fuel when it comes to the alternative fuels. And um, with, of course, our new development on the site, also being capable for um, uh, using ammonia as, as a fuel on that is, of course, a very critical component to enable, um, let's, uh, let's say, the whole um, usage of ammonia. The the question will be, of course, the uptake of ammonia and how fast this will happen. Yeah. So, but nevertheless, we as Alpha Laval, we believe uh, there will be a magnitude of different fuels, and this is why we position ourselves and enhance our existing portfolio and create new portfolio, which really enables all our customers and partners to take whatever route they feel is the right route for the future. That multi-fuel strategy you mentioned is fascinating, especially as the industry grapples with fuel diversity. Speaking of positioning for various pathways, Alpha Laval offers everything from heat exchanges to fuel systems. So how important is this comprehensive approach as ships become more complex with alternative fuels? Yeah, very good question. Uh, I mean, this we see in our portfolio as well. Yeah, and when we look at the portfolio development in the last years, we see the portfolio has really expanded significantly. And of course, we know that this is also happening on board uh, for our customers, which is not easy, right? I mean, they have changing crews, uh, complex systems, a magnitude of different suppliers with different, um, of course, uh, control systems and user interfaces. So we understand this is a very important um, uh, challenge for them. And this is also why we have decided to go broad into the different technologies, because we believe that we need to be a good and strong speaking partner, serving our customers in uh, various fields and making by that also it more easy for them to cope with these complex uh, challenges. On the other side, of course, Alpha Laval maintains a very large uh, service organization around the world and like that we can help also our customers the best to maintain and to operate um, these devices in the best way because using the devices is very crucial we believe um, that these devices of course not all of them need to be uh, applied all the time and if the crew is not trained and not used to it or doesn't trust the system then they are not applying it and that means the operation uh, is of the vessel is not at the optimal stage. And especially when it comes to energy efficiency, this is very, very, very critical. You have touched on a critical pain point, uh, crew complexity and training. Now, this becomes even more relevant when we consider operational flexibility. And your fuel flexible marine boilers can be delivered as electric hybrid or hybrid ready. So how does this flexibility helping operators navigate fuel uncertainty? Well, I'm not sure if it's the fuel uncertainty where it will really uh, navigate them through. Um, as I said, we will have different boilers with, for different fuels, but we of course know that uh, when the vessels are in port, that um, the, the shore connection is a very important element um, also given by different uh, regulations, uh, local regulations. And of course, it's a good opportunity to um, improve the sustainability of the vessel operations. So for us, we thought that as the boiler is, is an important element, uh, we thought that, of course, this is also something we can apply. And this is why I think the hybrid um, solution we have now developed um, is a very first and important step to connect the two worlds, uh, the electrical world with, of course, the alternative fuels world. That bridge between electrical and alternative fuel systems reflects a broader innovation philosophy. With your rich heritage and decades in marine equipment, how is Alpha Laval's approach to innovation evolving to meet decarbonization challenges? 
Well, innovation is our core, is where we are coming from. Our founder, Gustav de Laval, was one of the most innovative person uh, of his, his time. And this is the spirit we are continuing. So for us, innovation is is a very strong driver. We have large R&D teams. We have very strong product management focus to understand which directions, where do we need to go. Um, and of course, we are launching, especially also in the last years, we have launched a magnitude of new products, um, which we have developed. We have renewed a lot of our existing portfolio, which I think demonstrates the strength we have in really driving innovation forward. Uh, but it's not limited to that. I mean, innovation comes out of our own strength, but we also, with a magnitude of acquisitions or partnerships we have driven in the last years, uh, we are also on that path looking for innovation because yeah, there are other bright minds and people with great ideas and we try to help them and of course uh, help them also our customers to to find these great ideas. Um, that is the important. Your mention of acquisitions and partnerships as innovation drivers is intriguing. This brings me to some specific examples like Ocean Glide. The Ocean Glide air lubrication system represents a different approach to efficiency. How do you balance incremental improvements with breakthrough technologies? So that is a very good question. And I think Ocean Glide uh, and, and also other recent acquisitions are, are a good example. Um, we are, of course, a very innovative company by ourselves. We have a strong portfolio. We are um, well, renewing this regularly. We are revisiting this. We are replacing and innovating. But another thing is, of course, that we are um, looking around in the market and try to identify spots which are fitting to our portfolio and to our ambition and to our vision when it comes to sustainable uh, shipping. And uh, Ocean Glide was, is, is one of these examples yeah, where we think that uh, the innovation coming from the Ocean Glide team was a very good complement to our portfolio when it comes to energy efficiency measures around sustainable shipping. And that is, I think, the mix is the, the critical and the secret around it. We innovate ourselves, but we are also very open um, to help young uh, and interesting technologies to find their way into the market. And the third element is we are also looking for partnerships. So we have a number of partnerships in different forms, joint ventures, um, for example, uh, Ocean Bird is a very interesting uh, joint venture we have with, with our long-lasting partner, Valenius, which of course also goes in that direction. So we believe that there are different ways and means, and we have spoken about complexity before. And also for us, this is of course more complex, and this is the way how we try to, to manage the complexity. That acquisition strategy clearly extends beyond air lubrication. So like your recent energy marine acquisition introduces yet another technological dimension. The energy marine acquisition brings ultrasonic anti-fouling technology to your portfolio. How do you identify and evaluate new technologies for acquisition? And what role do you, strategic partnerships play in your innovation strategy? The, the energy acquisition is a very interesting one for us because um, the driver for us was we saw this is a good technology to complement our energy efficiency portfolio. Yeah, we see um, that the technology, that anti-fouling, of course, is a challenge uh, for our customers and is, of course, uh, um, well, also demanding a higher fuel consumption. So solving this problem can be um, a very good thing. And this is why this is always the trigger for us. How and how can we improve energy efficiency? Or how can we help our customers with the alternative fuels and depending on what alternative fuels? So for us, the um, the energy acquisition also is so interesting because we are venturing into a new technology. So ultrasonic technology is not naturally our, our home turf, uh, but we simply believe that this is an interesting technology which can be applied in anti-fouling, but also, of course, maybe for other uh, types of applications and, and technology. So, so this is what we are trying to, to cultivate now uh, with the team. And of course, for us also, we help uh, the energy team to get access to the customers that, of course, our customers are helping. And also our global service network here is a very essential uh, contributor to really uh, build a reliable uh, technology and system for our customers. 
those engineering challenges highlight the technical depth required. But beyond individual innovations, there is a critical matter of system integration. With a comprehensive marine equipment portfolio, from heat exchangers to fuel systems, how do you ensure all these technologies work together seamlessly as uh, ships become more complex with alternative fuels and hybrid systems? Yes, I mean the the complexity on board is is one of the great challenges um, for our customers, and we pay a lot of attention to make the journey for our customers as seamless and as easy as possible. So um, that of course is very much related to the user interface yeah, and the control system. So I think we are trying to harmonize this as much as possible. There's still a way to, for improvement, but we have created a, a rather central organization structure helping all our different business units and, uh, and lines and product lines to, to keep this in a, in a similar way. So this is very important. Another element we are putting a lot of focus is of course the training element yeah so one is to have it on board and and to be able to apply it but to be able to apply it you need to learn how to apply it and how to use it so we are also putting a lot of emphasis on that part of the equation your focus on harmonization and training really encapsulates uh, the human element in this technological transformation so when what a captivating discussion. Are your forward-thinking strategies for sustainable marine solutions leave us energized, I would say, for the decarbonization journey ahead. Thank you so much for your insights and thanks so much for your time today. Okay, Joachim, thank you very much. Uh, happy to, to be on your call, on your video. Great, thank you.